working. All right, thanks, Mike. Um, so I'm Tom. I've been working for Vincent Wildlife Trust for about two years now. So I kind of joined um, the Devon Great Torsion Bat Project was well underway when I joined, but I'd kind of been watching it from the sidelines prior to this, and it's been a great help for me settling into this role to work with everyone involved in that project. So um, yeah, it's been a brilliant project so far. So our bat program at Vincent Wildlife Trust, um, we have five principal species that we work on. That's greater and lesser horseshoe bat, the barbastel, backslides bat and Mediterranean long eared bat. There are other bat species we work on as well, um, but our core work is focused on these species. And our projects within these species fall within the fields of uh, monitoring solutions and that, that's more focused on your um, rarer woodland species where we've had projects in conjunction with Fiona and her team, uh, population restoration and also conflict management. Population restorations really kind of talking about our work with two horseshoe species. Um, so Vincent Wildlife Trust has been in the business of managing horseshoe bat reserves since 1980 and that's when the trust acquired its first reserve uh, rock farm in Brook Presley so that's 40 years this year and today we have 37 nature reserves across um, Britain and Ireland for both greater and lesser horseshoe bats. Six of these um, within the counties of Somerset, Dorset and Devon have breeding return to colonies of greater horseshoe bats. More recently, we've had other sites with great horseshoe bats as well, but there's no evidence of breeding in those just yet. So for, man for managing these sites, uh, we have an internal audit process, which we use to review all of our sites periodically. And within that process, there are five main areas um, which, we, which we focus on. Um, so Site security is uh, the first part of the audit process, and that's really talking about structural integrity of each building. Is it structurally sound? Uh, is it going to stand the test of time? Um, is it secure from vandalism? And um, so how are the, many of our roosters surrounded by trees as well? So we have periodic surveys to check that they're okay, and there's nothing imminent that can cause damage to the roost and therefore um, cause the bats to lose their roosting site. But access is another important part of that process. This is talking about the access points for the bats and um, the size number. Are they are there a suitable number for the for the size of the colony and are they inhibited anyway by their um, movements in and out of the building? Uh, microclimates and lights bill really focuses on this the suite of microclimates available to the bats in each building, and it's really important that that's quite diverse. Um, particularly when we're thinking about things like climate change, we're predicted to have more sort of um, extreme weather events, you might say. So you, you might have um, uh, a late frost in spring where it gets uh, unsuitably cold and or even a particularly prolonged heat wave. So we try to make our buildings resilient to those events by providing the bats uh, a suite of um, microclimates they can adjust their roosting position depending on how hot or cold it is inside the roost at that time of year um, making sure they're suitably um, devoid of light as well the structure of each building is also very important um, this is this is talking about using optimal building materials for the bat um, Pete was mentioning stone walls and slate roofs and things like that so that really covers that and also suitable perching opportunities within each building uh, and then finally, the surrounding landscape. So um, this is a lot of what uh, Finch was talking about earlier. Um, do we do we know the foraging areas for this particular colony that they prefer to use? How far are they having to travel? What are they having to traverse to get there? And what are the other um, roosting opportunities roosting opportunities available to them in the nearby landscape? So uh, there we go. So we've um, had some good feedback from our uh, population trend analysis in our reserves. Um, this is a population trend analysis of our greater horseshoe bat reserves. And uh, this is quite good. As you can see, it's a nice upward trend. Uh, but what's interesting is it actually um, is slightly higher than what's calculated for the national outlook, the national output, uh, national um, annual, ad, not, average annual 
Um, population increase, I believe, is about 4.6% for Greater Horseshoes for all of Britain. Uh, and in our reserves, which is um, which are just in England, um, our average annual increase is around 7.3%. So we have two um, Great Horseshoe Bat Reserves in Devon, uh, which a lot of you will be familiar with. I know a lot of our um, volunteers for these sites are in the audience today. Um, and a lot of people, um, a lot of the delegates have done work around Rock Farm for the Devon Great Horseshoe Bat Project. And that's where the uh, camera is that you can see on the website, uh, the Devon Great Horseshoe Bat Project website. So first of all, uh, Rock Farm, as I mentioned earlier, is um, the first bat reserve that Vincent Wildlife Trust acquired in 1980. So it's had a good 40 years of um, uh, protection specifically to manage for greater horseshoe bats and also enhancements. I'm um, one on a long list of conservation officers that have worked on this site over the years, so very much standing on the shoulders of uh, the people who have come before me there. But what makes it a fascinating site is that it's, uh, it's on paper, it seems to have everything that the bats need, which is surely why it's been doing so well. It's right at the face of the quarry, which is the um, principal overwintering site for the bats, but also there's these two large buildings that the bats use through the, the summer months and indeed the rest of the year. Uh, as you can see, there's quite an extensive um, roof area at different aspects. And this, this, as I was talking about earlier with the microclimates, these tend to be slightly different because they're, they have different um, aspects facing the sun. So the, the, the primary um, maternity roost is in the, you can see the door on, oh, you can see my mask, can't you? The door here, this is where the, um, Devon Great Horse Bat Project camera is, and that's the primary um, maternity roost for the bats. But what's interesting is as soon as these um, pups become volant, they tend to completely leave that area and use the rest of the roost, which are just ever so slightly cooler. Uh, and this is the interior of one of the cool rooms on the smaller barn. So this building was um, was built up in 2003, so it hasn't always been there. And you might think, why do you need a cool room at a, a site that has a, an extensive high binocular right there? But for the past two years, when we've had these, we've been seeing these mild winters where it hasn't really got very cold. Someone was telling me in Buckfastly last week that there was there was virtually no frost last year in Buckfastly. And what we're seeing is that the bats are increasingly just hanging out in these cool rooms over winter and not going to their traditional um, winter quarters deep in the caves. Um, so what I'm sure you're all interested to hear is the count data we've been getting from Rock Farm. Um, it's, it's been quite difficult to monitor this year because unfortunately because of the coronavirus situa situation, I haven't been able to get out with our um, dedicated teams of volunteers. So I've been filming all the entrances with cameras and it's uh, taken me all summer to get through that footage. So, um, But for the 16th of July, our peak count for the site was 2,466 adult bats with 922 pups. So this is the highest that roost has ever been and it continues to grow um, as the largest uh, breeding colony of great horseshoe bats in Western Europe. It doesn't really, it's not showing any signs of slowing down in terms of its population growth. Our other Devon site is Highmark's Barn. Um, this, is, this is just off the River Avon is about um, eight kilometers northeast of Kingsbridge thereabouts. And in 2017, this was the second largest uh, breeding colony of greater horseshoe bats in uh, Britain. But unfortunately, um, since 2018, there have been no bats present at all um, following the, the building's been taken up by uh, barn owls that have been breeding in there. So in 2018, when I came on, Board to work for the Vincent Wildlife Trust, there were no bats in there at all. Uh, and since then, one of our sort of priorities have been trying to um, do something about this roost so we can allow the bats to come back. We did analyse the, the pellets of the owls that were using the building and we found a solitary greater horseshoe skull. So there may have been low levels of predation, but we believe predominantly it's sort of disturbance within the building. Uh, whoops. Oops, what's happened there then? Uh, 
Oh, sorry about this. Okay, so these are the two. I think that video is that video footage playing for everyone. Can you can you see that? Can someone give me a thumbs up or something? That's good. That's good. So these are the two um, entrances to the roost, and show that the um, barn owls were using both entrances and sort of hanging around. So this this was obvious to us that this is the main reason why the bats weren't coming back. Um, I'm just getting a white screen there. Is that what everyone else is getting? Yes, but I think it takes a bit of time to load if it's a video. Okay, because it's a video. Mm -hmm. Let's try again. So I, I'm not sure if it's missed any now, but I think I'm all right. So we, the modifications we made to the entrances were with the intention of excluding the barn owls, but still allowing the bats to come in. So this is a secondary entrance that you can see on the screen before. We replaced the grill with two vertical baffles and what we like to call a tip tray, which as you can see here is just on the inside of the longer baffle. This, this has a tipping plate on it so that were an owl or uh, any other predator to touch that um, tray, it would tilt forwards and cause it to close. But where its resting position is open, it allows bats to fly through freely. And on the other entrance, we just put a simple baffle over the front to stop um, owls coming in. That will force them to fly upwards, which the nature of owls flight uh, means they'll stall and they'll not be able to do that, whereas that shouldn't be a problem for the bats to come back with. And as you can see from this footage, it um, was successful in keeping the owls out and following um, those interventions which we put into place this winter, there have been no more pellets or anything inside and the camera shot footage shows that they are unable to regain access to the roost. However, it's no problem for the bats, they're able to just fly, um, they're able to manoeuvre those baffles perfectly well. So um, before I talk about this, um, we were quite worried that the bats weren't going to come back this year. I monitored the roost for the MBMP in, um, in July and there were only two bats present, two greater horseshoe bats present. So we were a bit worried that they weren't going to come back. However, I went last week and couldn't resist poking my head in just to see if anything had happened. And there was 500 or so graters in there. So unfortunately I don't have any video footage to show you of that, but um, we're quite happy that the bats are back there now and they should resume breeding next year, which is a good indication that our um, entrance modifications were successful. But looking to the future, there's a few more things we'd like to do at the site. Um, it is quite an open building. The bats predominantly use the lean-to you can see on the right of the, of the picture in the bottom right there. And the main barn itself is a, is a huge room which they don't, um, they don't tend to use much at all except for flying around prior to emergence. And this is the uh, this is the main square you can see on the, the drawing on the bottom left there. And so our plans our plans with that are to introduce a a raised loft as you can see in the image below, and that will create um, that will sort of reduce the air circulation with, within that raised loft and be a bit warmer and hopefully hopefully um, improve functionality of the building for the bats in that way. And also to introduce a cool room, a sort of crude diagram I've drawn at the top there, um, which will provide sort of two sort of new microclimates within the building that the bats can use. Because we know that there are some overwintering bats there. They do have um, underground, underground hibernacula nearby. However, on a, a milder winter, they may want to just stay in a cooler area and then they're better able to respond to um, sort of um, short bursts of mild weather where they might want to forage over winter. Uh, and that's it from me. Thank you very much.